With video cameras presumably running nonstop, they substituted pieces of medieval linen for pieces of the shroud. So why didn't the cameras pick it up? Holger Kirsten has a theory. The entire process was videotaped, and I'm certainly the only person on this planet who watched every frame of the whole eight-hour procedure. It's all wonderfully documented, except for a missing half hour. It turns out that the cameras were turned off when the shroud pieces were taken to another room and put into three containers, one for each lab. My question, of course, was since they were documenting everything, why wasn't this part documented? It was, after all, the critical moment. The reason given for turning off the cameras? So that the labs wouldn't be able to tell the shroud piece from the control samples. But the labs already knew which piece belonged to the shroud, because it was never dethreaded. And Kirsten's conclusion? Well, in reality, some kind of manipulations must have taken place in there. Manipulations, as in pulling a fast one. By carefully examining the photos of the shroud pieces and the ones the lab received, Kirsten has deduced that a switch must have taken place. According to him, the samples don't match, either by weight or appearance. This piece shows the Oxford sample, which was used to perform the radiocarbon dating. We can identify the fold axis, and we have the zero thread, at which point the weaving pattern turns in a different direction. This coordinate system allows us to compare the pieces like fingerprints. This one is not identical to this one. But even if Kirsten is right, it begs the question, why would the church resort to deception to prove the shroud was inauthentic? Kirsten believes it was because they were frightened of what the shroud unwittingly revealed about the crucifixion and its aftermath. Here we can see the bleeding from the wound in the side, the famous side wound which Longinus made with his spear. Here we can clearly see the strong flows of blood after the body was laid in the horizontal position. And Kirsten thinks those blood flows are a telltale forensic sign of Jesus' true condition after the crucifixion.